Hey, it's Sam. And John. And you can watch new episodes of our latest podcast, OKOP, where we tell the funniest freaking stories on the internet. Like someone making billions off a of plane RuneScape? Oh, make those Bitcoin billies. Or the doctor accidentally putting the mistress as the emergency contact instead of the wife. Hey, yo, that sounds like a family feud. Do not tell Steve Harvey. But the point is, we got some bangers. Yes, so if you want to laugh and occasionally cringe, listen now for free wherever you get your podcasts. The Pet Milk Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The first evaporated milk, Pet Milk, presents Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Dick Legrand, Gil Stratton Jr., Gloria McMillan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Keith Fowler and directed by Max Hutto with music by the Kingsman and Billy Mills Orchestra. When a young woman marries and starts to keep house, one of the first things she wants to learn is how to cook the foods her husband likes. And pet milk gives you young wives the help you want. Because on every tall can of pet milk, there's a husband-tested recipe. Before any recipe is put on a pet milk label, it's sent out to homes like yours, where the wives try the recipe and report what their husbands say about it. And on pet milk labels, you get only those recipes which have been given a big OK by the husbands. This, of course, is just one of the extras you get when you get pet evaporated milk. Extra nourishment is another because pet milk is double rich, concentrated to double richness by evaporation. And then there's extra economy, for pet evaporated milk costs less generally than bottled milk or any other form of milk. So for husband-pleasing recipes, for extra goodness... And extra economy. Get pet milk, the first evaporated milk, the first choice of good cooks. There's an old Chinese proverb which says, Gong bong hao, yi wong bak. Which translated means, when clever wife gets heart set on new piano, husband good as stuck. And by an odd coincidence, here's Mrs. Molly McGee with a young girlfriend of hers on their way home from a piano sale right now. As we join, Fibber McGee and Molly. And I'm delighted to see that sale at the Bon Ton, Debbie, because McGee and I have needed a piano for years. They had some wonderful bargains, all right. Do you really think you can get Mr. McGee to buy one? Well, it won't be easy, but I think I can swing it. Now, when you and Ed Tatum get married, dear, just remember one thing. A husband and a hot biscuit are just alike. They both need a lot of buttering up. (laughs) Oh, that's cute. I'll remember that. You see, men don't have many ideas of their own, the poor lads. And if you can take one of your ideas and make them think they thought it up, why, they're happy as birds. Oh, you mean you're going to work it so Mr. McGee thinks he's the one who wants a new piano. Exactly. That's it. (laughs) It's a game, dear, like pin the tail on the donkey. Only much easier. Because this donkey cooperates. (laughs) Pushes his tail right into the pin. How do you go about it, though? Well, you watch. I'll walk in the door and say, McGee, I just saw a wonderful sale on pianos at the bomb town. And he'll say, a sale on pianos? My gosh, a piano costs a fortune. Well, then what? Then I'll say, but ours is shop theory. And he'll say, all it needs is tuning. I'll tune that piano myself. <laughs> After he gets it all apart, he'll decide to buy a new one. <laughs> See, I think it's wonderful the way you figure things, but, well, how can you be sure Well, you you'll... come on in the house and I'll show you. Hello, dearie. Home again. <laughs> Hi, kiddo. Good morning, Debbie. Hello, Mr. McGee. McGee, I just saw a wonderful sale on pianos at the Bon Ton. A sale on pianos? My gosh, a piano costs a fortune. <laughs> but ours is shop, dearie. Ah, oh, all it needs is tuning. I'll tune that piano myself. Good. You betcha. I'll go get my pliers and monkey wrench and get started on it right now. <laughs> you see, Debbie? Well, that's just terrific. <laughs> Thanks for the husband handling lesson, Mrs. McGee. I'm going to run along now. Well, can't you stay a while? I want to stop and see Ed at the drugstore. There's a lovely scarf at the Bon Ton, and I want to make Ed think it was his idea to get it for me. <laughs> Bye now. Goodbye, dear. Ah, what a happy wife she'll be. 
She learned so fast. <laughs> well, I couldn't find my runky, Minch. But this ball peen hammer and my crowbar ought to fix that piano the way you want it. I just know they will. I can't wait for you to start ruining her tuning it, dearie. <laughs> Okay, I'll hit a few keys first and see how it sounds. Hmm. That last note seemed a little off to me. Oh, you have a keen ear. Yeah, I better take a look inside. You hit the keys while I poke around in here. Right. Oh. Well, what do you know about that? There's my old monkey wrench. What? Yeah, I must have left it in here the last time I tuned the piano. Sort of tangled in the strings there, but... Good yank, ought to get it loose. <clears throat> there she comes. Oh. <laughs> dad wrapped the dad ratted. Break something? The string busted. My gosh, they must make them out of spaghetti. <laughs> well, anyhow, I got my monkey wrench. Come and... in. Hello, daughter. Hi there, Johnny. What you doing, kid? Hello, Mr. Old Timer. Hi, Old Timer. I'm just getting ready to tune the piano. No, I love music, son. <laughs> Always reminds me of that old gang of mine. Did I ever tell you about that old gang, Johnny? Yeah. Thought so. Well, here we go again. <laughs> Thought so. Ah, uh, that was a great old gang. Yeah? Used to hang out in the harness room at the livery stable. Mm. There was Maddie and Moe and Freddy and Joe. There was Eddie and Spike and Freddy and Isabel. <laughs> Isabel, how'd she get in there? Oh, Johnny, she owned the livery stable. <laughs> and your old gang loved music. Sure did, daughter. We organized a drum bugle corps one year. Oh? Got us a bugle book and taught ourselves a bugle. <laughs> Very impressive group, that old gang of mine. How bad? Maddie and Moe and Fatty and Joe. Eddie and Spike and Freddie and Geraldine. <laughs> Where'd Geraldine come from? Bought the livery stable from Isabel, daughter. <laughs> Oh, I wish you could have heard us play the Stars and Stripes forever. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not forever. <laughs> well, we got so good that they made us an offer to march in the Election Day Parade. And so we ordered us some fancy uniforms. Oh, I'd like to have saw that. Uniforms didn't get there until just before parade time, so we leapt into them and got ready. Boy. Green silk pants, red velvet jackets. Wow. And them tall fur hats that looked like teddy bears was roosting on our heads. What a picture. Well, sir, we got into line, took a deep breath. Yeah. The leader gave us a downbeat. The parade started. We all tripped and fell flat on our faces. <laughs> My goodness, what did you trip on? Our green silk pants, daughter. We forgot to order belts. <laughs> Come on, kid. Come on. Billy Mills for the orchestra and Betty Cardo.
How's that sound, Molly? Better already, huh? Certainly sounds uh, different, all right. Yeah. I already took care of one problem. You know them three keys that was always stuck when you hit them? <laughs> you won't have any more trouble with them keys. Good. Got them loose, did you? Plenty loose. They're over there on the windowsill. Oh, great. They sure use cheap glue to put them ivories on with. <laughs> I, I just gave one little lift with my crowbar. <laughs> and all three keys fell off. Well, I really think this was a wartime piano, dearie. Yeah. Civil wartime. <laughs> they don't make... Oh, come in. Hello, Ollie. Come in. Well, good morning, missus. Hello, McGee. Uh, pull up a chair, Ollie. I'm pretty busy right now. Yeah, that's better. Ah, that's perfect. Let's see now. It's, uh... Is he doing what it looks like, missus? <laughs> That's right, Ollie, tuning the piano. Yeah, probably looks pretty tough to you, Ollie, but when you happen to have a natural talent for fixing things, plus perfect pitch and also an ear for music, <laughs> it's simple enough. Oh, you got a good ear for music, McGee. I can see that. Betcha. I often think what a fine mandolin pick your ear would make. <laughs> You know, in fact, one of them ears would make sex mandolin pigs back then. Okay, 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 that's very funny. Yeah, I thought so myself. You know, I gave the kids at home lots of chuckles. <laughs> well, you have a wonderful family, Ollie. Those children of yours must give you a lot of happiness. Oh, sure they do, missus. You know, on weekends, for instance, when all the little fellas is home from school, I can't think of anything that makes a man happier than they used to get out of the house for a while. <laughs> That's a nice kid of yours in the Navy, that Lars. What do you hear from him, anything? Oh, yes, ma'am. Mrs. gets a wonderful letter from Lars for Mama's Day. Oh. He likes the Navy fine. He says he's going to stay in it when he gets out. <laughs> oh? And the letter says, Mama, he says, when I get to be a big admiral, I save all my money and I took care of you and Papa the rest of your life. Now, isn't that sweet? That's what I mean, Ollie. Yeah, it's very touching. Me and the messes figures it up. When Lars gets to be an admiral, we'll be 218 years old. We, 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 we won't need much. I, I go sit down now and wait. That's all right. Okay. Now, let me see. This is going to be a breeze, Molly. By the time I'm through with this job, it'll be just like you got a brand new piano. That's exactly what I'm depending on, dearie. <laughs> Tuning the piano is a cinch for me on account of I come from a musical family. Had a cousin that played trumpet, and that trumpet was all he could think about. It even busted up his marriage. Oh, how could that be? Well, his wife was a bridge player, and every time she played an ace, he'd trumpet. <laughs> Don't you get it, kiddo? A trumpet is a horn, and when you play cards... It ain't funny, McGee. <laughs> Well, my grandfather thought so. That was his favorite joke. <laughs> well, you just go ahead with your tuning. Okay, Hello, now. Molly. Hi, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Oh, hi, Junior. Excuse me if I don't take your hat and coat. I'm busy. Uh, uh what's with the piano, pal? Well, it's a little out of tune, so himself is taking care of it. Yeah, stick around while I get a tune, Junior. I'll, I'll beat out a little harmony for you, boy. Well, if you're looking for harmony, pal, real sweet harmony, I can tell you where to find it. Uh oh Right in the pet milk recipe of the month. Huh? Chicken, peas, and rice dinner. Covers the entire musical scale. Oh? Let me show you. Here, tap out the scale for me, pal. Ah. Humor him, dearie. Humor him. We're trapped. Oh, oh. Okay. Dough. Dough. That's the dough you save when you treat yourself to this delicious but economical dish. <laughs> that milks, chicken, peas, and rice dinner. Ray. Ray. That's what you say after the first taste. Ray for that pet milk flavor. <laughs> the poor laddie works so hard. Me. Me. That's me, Harlow Wilcox, oh. the man who gives you all these fascinating facts. This guy's a regular Oscar Hammerhead. <laughs> Fa. Fa. That's what I'd say to anyone who doesn't try this pet milk recipe. Fa. Please, there's a lady present. <laughs> Soul. Soul. That means if you once eat this combination of chicken, peas, and rice cooked with pet, you'll be completely soul on it. Oh, dear. 
there. Now he's really grabbing. <laughs> Hurry it up, dearie. Yeah, la. 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 Uh... Hmm. La. You better skip that one. You can't win them all. No, no, I'll get it now. I'll get it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. La. La. Oh, that's for the satisfying goodness of chicken, peas, and rice. A la pet. <laughs> oh, this thing's really getting a grip on him. See? See. That's for the grocer you should see to get plenty of your favorite brand of canned peas and pet milk for this wonderful recipe. Do. Do. Say, I already did dough once. But there must be another one. There is. Dough! That's for the dough. I wish you all wouldn't slam when you all go out. I'll close it quietly. So long. Well, maybe I can get back to my tuning. That last dough sounded a little flat. <laughs> it's too low. Low dough is nothing new to me. <laughs> We've been on low dough as long as I can remember. Hand me the monkey wrench. Thanks. You tap the key while I tighten the string, will you? Right, maestro. Good. Now try it again. I'll tighten it some more. <laughs> oh, Molly. You played it too hard. Gee whiz, you busted the string. What? I broke it. Why? Come in. Good morning, Molly. McGee. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Oh, hi, Latrive. Um, what are you doing to that unfortunate piano, McGee? I'm tuning it. Hey, watch your feet there, Homer. Don't step on the lid there. Lid? Yes. You mean to tell me one of these misshapen slabs of imaginary mahogany here is the lid of your piano? No, both of them is the lid off of the piano. <laughs> it's split. <laughs> Well, it's every man's right to destroy his own property, I suppose. Well, certainly. Since when did you get so music-minded, anyhow? I have always been interested in music, McGee. Oh? Huh? In fact, Miss Newell and I often oh, go to... Oh, Miss the... Newell. How is she, Mr. Mayor? Oh, Lillian is fine, Molly. Just splendid. Still out to... Still out to hook you, is she, Latrell? <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Miss Newell's only love is music. She's a concert violinist, you know. Yeah, well, you want to watch them female fiddlers, Latrell? <laughs> She'll saw you into a sentimental mood some night and braid you an alder halter out of an old fiddle string. <laughs> when she drags you down that aisle, boy... Oh, no, no, no don't, don't talk silly. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. The idea of a delicate little thing like Miss Newell dragging anybody anywhere is ridiculous. Oh, is she really delicate, Mr. Mayor? Oh, quite, quite, Molly. Oh? We were walking along Oak Street yesterday and she turned her ankle on a matchstick. <laughs> We, uh, we had to stop and look in a shop window for several minutes before she was able to go on. Oh, what shop was it? A Huggins Jewelry Shop. <laughs> what was in the window? Wedding rings. <laughs> but it was merely a coincidence. Now, McGee, don't tease me or trivia. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't bother me, Molly. When you've been in politics as long as I have, you learn to take it with a smile and turn the other cheek. Is that what you do when your fiddling friend kisses you? <laughs> yes, yes. First, she gently kisses the right cheek, and then I kind of... Don't stop it! <laughs> Alas, poor Homer. We knew him well. <laughs> McGee, Miss Newell is giving a concert tomorrow night at 8.30 at the Civic Auditorium. Oh, fine. It just occurred to me that I might run into you there. Could be. Fine. I'll look for you in front at 8 o'clock. Thought it was 8.30. It is, but at 8, I'll be driving up in my car. That's when I'd like to run into you. Good day. <laughs> King's Men and Lady Love. Lady Love, Lady Love, Lady Love. I've got two arms, eager and strong. I've got two arms to hold my Lady Love. But they've been all oh so empty so long that heaven knows I need my Lady Love. Lady Love, Lady Love. Oh, beautiful toothpaste, beautiful soap, beautiful brush and comb. To meet my lady love, fixing to walk her home. Beautiful razor, beautiful blade, beautiful shave and cream. Fixing to hold my lady love, fixing to have a dream. Lady love, lady love. I've got two eyes, two eyes have I. I've got two eyes to see my lady love. But they have 
I've seen her only at night, for she is all that I've been dreaming of. I've been dreaming of my lady love. Oh, beautiful talcum, pretty perfume, bought at the five and dime. Fix me kiss, my lady love, fix to have a time. Beautiful sunset, beautiful sky, beautiful than I thought. Play that again, dearie. That's solid. Huh? <laughs> That's gone, but really gone. Yeah, I'm trying to get it back. <laughs> this is taking a little longer than I thought, Molly. It's... Well, I'm so glad I married a man who's handy with tools. Yeah. Just think, if it wasn't for you being able to tune this old beat-up piano and fix it up, we'd have to buy a new one at that wonderful sale at the Bon Ton with no money down and only a few dollars a month in easy payments. <laughs> Yeah, well, watch behind you there, Molly. Don't stumble. What's that thing? It's a piano leg. Kind of come loose when I tried to tilt it a little so, so I could roll the marbles down to one corner that I dropped in there last summer when I was... More company. Yeah, it ought to be Ed from Kramer's Drugstore. I ordered some stuff. Come in. Oh, hello, Ed. Oh, come hi. in. Hi, Mr. McGee. Here's the stuff you ordered, Mr. McGee. Bottle of glue and six bottles of root beer. Oh, thanks, Ed. Set it on the piano there. I'll take the root beer, Ed. I'll put it in the icebox. Gee, Mr. McGee, you tuning that piano? Yep. Yeah. That's a terrific job, isn't it? I mean, it takes talent. Ah, well, when you've been a husband as long as I have, you develop a talent for a lot of things. I gotta tighten this string a little. Ah, that oughta. That oughta. <laughs> that rabbit busted. Yeah. Well, I'll fix that one later. Put it on the floor there with the other busted strings, Ed. Oh, gosh, is that what those are? Mm. I thought it was a roll of bob wire. <laughs> Gee, you'll tackle anything, won't you? Well, a husband these days has got to be pretty ungenious. Look, Ed, I'll give you a little advice for when you get married yourself, son. Yes, sir? All you got to do with a wife, Ed, is outthink them. Hmm. Yeah. Now, my wife, Molly, come home today all set to buy a new piano. But I merely put my foot down. I had to be firm with her, but I told her no deal. Gosh. You're the boss, huh? <laughs> well, Natch. Was she... Was she sore? Sore? Nah. I told her I'd tune up this old one for her and it tickled her to death. <laughs> yeah, they're just like little kids, Ed. <laughs> they keep trying, but if it don't work, they're just as happy. <laughs> Do me a favor, will you? Sure. Out in my garage on the top shelf, there's a pair of wire cutters. I gotta untangle a few of these strings. Oh, yes, sir, I'll get them. Uh, top shelf, huh? Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Bye. Bye. Right. Well, back to work, McGee. Got a piano to tune here, boy. <laughs> That awful. Now, let's see if I can reach down in here and tighten these bass strings without... Whoa! Oh, Dad read it. I lost my wrench in the piano again. <laughs> All the rotten, dirty... Oh, well. All I gotta do is reach down in there and get it. Ah, I got hold of it. Give it a little yank. <laughs> this ain't the... Hey. Last time I tuned this thing, there was a great big bolt underneath here. Oh, yeah, there it is, a big bolt. I loosened it and it done something. Well, I'll loosen it up and see what it's for. Uh, uh, it's coming. A little more. And... Oh! Here's your wire cutters, Mr. McGee, and... Mr. McGee, where are you? Lift this dad rat a piano off me, Ed. Oh, gee whiz. Uh, 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 are you all right? Yeah. Whew. Yeah, that's what that bolt was for. <laughs> Boy, 
You sure got this old piano laid out so you can work on it now, all right. <laughs> yeah, well, I... Gosh, you sure have taught me how to handle a wife. The way a husband can save himself uh, money if he knows uh, how... To... Ed. <laughs> yes, sir? There are certain times when a guy finds it cheaper to just go ahead and buy something new instead of wasting his valuable time trying to patch up something old. See? It does? I, I mean, it is? I already told Molly she couldn't buy a new piano, so she gave up the idea. See? She's, she's perfectly happy about it. Oh, she seems happy, all right. Yeah. She was singing and chuckling to herself out there. Yeah, but I have now decided that the thing to do is to buy a new one. It's cheaper that way. Watch this. Hey, Molly! Yes, 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 yes. Well, uh, I've been thinking things over, kiddo. And you've been a good kid. Oh, well, thank you, sir. You deserve a new piano, baby. And I'm going to buy you one. Oh, McGee, you darling. You're so good to me. <laughs> Gee, are you a hero now? <laughs> yeah. Well, call the Bonton, Molly. Tell them to bring out a piano. They can take this one in for a down payment. And... Wonderful. All right, Bonton, bring it in. <laughs> Hey, ma'am, watch it, Penny. Easy, take hey, it. What is it? I'm sorry to kept you waiting outside what's so long. Oh, that's we okay, were... ma'am. Show us where you want it. Easy, watch it. Ma'am. Well, what the? Well, I'll be a. I'll be one too, Mister McGee. Boy, am I confused. <laughs> Fibber and Molly return in a moment. There are times when nothing seems to give you the same lift, the same deep down satisfaction as a good cup of coffee. And one thing that makes a good cup of coffee taste extra good is pet evaporated milk. Just a little pet milk gives coffee a tempting, creamy color because pet is a concentrated milk. Sweet country milk concentrated to double richness. And it's that double richness of pet milk that makes your coffee taste extra good, too. You see, when you use pet evaporated milk in place of cream, your coffee still has that full-bodied flavor, that characteristic coffee goodness that you enjoy so much. When you use pet milk instead of coffee cream, you get a lot more for your money, too. In fact, you get more than twice as much for your money because pet milk costs less than half of what you'd pay for cream. So, for your own coffee drinking enjoyment, for extra goodness, extra savings, too, use pet evaporated milk. Get several cans at your grocer's tomorrow. My, it's been an exciting day, McGee. That's just a beautiful piano. Yeah. And when you get a minute, dearie, would you do something for me? Hmm? The refrigerator has a little squeak in it. Would you put a drop of oil oh, in it? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, sir, not today. You buy a new one. I'm through. <laughs> Good night. Good night, Al. <laughs> the first evaporated milk, pet milk, brings you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Take two lonely people, a man 60 and a child of six. Put them in a situation that calls for extra understanding, and you have the ingredients for the heartwarming story of the week on Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program next Saturday morning. The second big feature is the recipe of the month for chicken, peas, and rice dinner. A tasty, satisfying one-dish dinner that's a big hit with husbands the country over. For a double measure of good listening, tune to Pet Milk's Mary Lee Taylor program next Saturday morning on NBC. <laughs> Now, Eddie Cantor presents his show business show on NBC.